So for those in a bit of a nostalgic mood, some of you who were kids in the 1980s uh, probably remember this. This is a board game uh, by the company Avalon Hill, which actually came out in a different form uh, in the early 70s. Uh, but this was the 1981 more brightly colorized rebirth in a way. Uh, so it was already 10 years old by the time this came out. Generally, uh, the opinion of those who play, who are usually, you know, older folks, uh, who play board games, and this board game in particular, the opinion was that the original game was better than uh, the 1981 colored charts that were made. I find that quite incomprehensible. Um, I should have brought an example of the original cards, but they look they looked confusing, they were badly designed, they would, to my mind, they were awful. Th this was a vast improvement. And this traveled around the world a little bit. You have some people in Europe that are aware of this game in the, the colorized version. And it's only the, the original black and white version, which I think is horrible. Uh, it seems to be more popular in America only. So to me, visually, uh, it is very clear uh, the original game design was by a man called Craig Taylor and the redesign was done by Kevin Zucker of Avalon Field in Hill in 1981. To me, the Kevin Zucker redesign uh, is vastly superior to, uh, to the original design of the game. It's more, you can memorize, as, I, as Kevin Zucker actually said to me, you can memorize the breakpoints just by visually, by visual memory. So when you're dealing with another, with an opponent who is hiding his uh, data card, you can still remember what his aircraft can do from memorizing the color breaks because they're so much more obvious. The original cards looked like uh, bank teller, you know, banknotes, you know, or, you know, a tax audit or something. It, <laughs> the, 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 and on top of that, the columns were upside down, like the lowest altitude was on top and the highest altitude was on the bottom. I mean, just horrible design in my opinion, but anyway. Uh, now, the thing is, the data in those cards, the data in those cards, of course, the mechanics of the games, uh, what I did here is I tried to improve, because, of course, these are not quite the original Avalon Hill cards. These are cards that I made myself. I will link a link. You can download them for free. The original uh, to what I did, which is available on Board Game Geek, Geek for free. You can download the PDFs of all these cards and the three pages of rules that I I think here they're glued inside the booklet basically this is I took the original booklet and these are my amended rules there are 30 30 rules and vertical dive rules which were kind of neglected in the original game and a new firing table uh, the firing table is a big improvement because the, the problem with the original game is it played very poorly, I thought. You spent most of the time flying crippled aircrafts that were diminished from previous hits. And it made the outcome very slow and predictable. And there was really no surprises in this game. It didn't look at all like real dogfights. Uh, so what happens here is that the damage is more unpredictable. If it occurs, usually it, it is either nearly fatal or it gives you enough of a reprieve that you still have a workable aircraft. One of the problems with the old game is that if you had a hit in the cockpit, you, you could not do some maneuvers. The result was that you were very predictable and you would be... There was no surprises in this game. The, this, this was one of the things that I disliked. And the crippling was very slow-paced and all that. So now the cockpit hits are very rare. 
on my table and generally most of the hits are they tend not to do much before uh, you get a fatal hit so basically even if you've been hit you can still you still have a fighting chance to turn the tables of course the aircraft is slightly degraded by hits but it uh, it is it feels a lot more like real dogfighting. Another thing that I improved massively is that the old game felt like the pilots flew with their eyes closed 10 seconds at a time, then they opened their eyes and then they saw what was going on and they had to work with that. Then they would close their eyes again for 10 seconds. You know, th this was a kind of fighting, a blind fighting. Basically, simultaneous movement with hidden plots is basically everybody is guessing what the other will do, but nobody is seeing what the other will do. So what I did is I modified the advantage rule so that you have to gain advantage in two consecutive game turns, essentially, before you can fire. So just coming across an enemy does not mean you can shoot at him. You have to follow him for a while. And this reflects the reality of, uh, the reality of air combat in that the rate of hit of even the best pilot was around 2% of fired shots. So this means that the weapons were actually very weak against each other. You had to really follow the enemy aircraft to really cause enough damage because it was kind of rare that in a single hit you would bring him down. You had to follow because of the weakness of the low percentage of hits. And this is why uh, more than what is stated today, but a lot of World War II dogfighting was still the old traditional turn fighting. A hit and run works when you have a very powerful armament and you have an armament that is centrally located in the nose so that you don't have convergence issues. Uh, so it worked for the P-38, it worked for the Messerschmitt 109. It was not so great for uh, aircraft with wing-mounted guns because there was convergence and hit-and-run attacks imply a high rate of closure. and this does not go well with uh, a stream of fire that converges from the wings. So, uh, so in reality, they did a lot of turn fighting, even right up to 1945, especially in Europe, because the speed between the aircrafts was more equal. One of the things that favored hit and run was the fact that Japanese aircrafts were had low protection and caught fire easily so you could could get away with hit and run and they were slower and they were they were more vulnerable so you could use hit and run on those types of aircraft but uh, in western europe the german aircrafts were faster they were better protected and so what this meant was more parity between two types and this meant turn fighting because you had to pepper your your opponent for a while, uh, you could you could not really hope to hit him and destroy him instantly. The the guns, you know, uh, even a twenty millimeter shell, you're trying to bring down a bring down a house sized aircraft with something that is the size of a thumb. You know, it's uh, it's not as deadly. Uh, the thirty millimeter shells were more one hit kills because they had a large explosive charge. Uh, but other than that, you had to pepper. And so the idea that hit and run was the modern way of doing things and turn fighting was the old way of doing things, uh, it, it's quite a misconception. Now, I discovered when I, when I decided to improve the game, because I thought that this was such an interesting and simple way of presenting the relative performance. Uh, here, you, here you have the ME163. There. Anyway, so that's the ME163, which uh, some people have tried to do in the banknote type of data cards. 
but they did not understand the performance of it. Uh, this is actually fairly accurate, uh, including the fact that the climb rate keeps going up the higher it goes, which is unique to that type of aircraft. Now, the thing that I discovered, uh, and this is going to sound strange, but because I wanted to have an accurate comparison of the character, I wanted to use, I wanted to create my own data cards, improve the game and have data cards that reflect the true character of each fighter aircraft. And what I found out was that, uh, well, basically flight physics, uh, doesn't really get what is going on. <laughs> this is in part due to um, a problem, I think, that was with the, the disparity of opinion you see between test pilots of World War II and the combat pilots of that same period. Test pilots of World War II were... It's going to sound condescending, but they were generally not, they, they, they generally were not, they were very theory driven. There was a lot of theory on how these things worked. They were very theory driven. And as a result, they, they, in my opinion, they failed to portray uh, what, what was the real character of these aircrafts. Whenever you're reading World War II accounts, of what these aircrafts were like. Always treat with the greatest suspicion anything that comes from a test pilot. And instead, always listen closely to whatever says a frontline combat pilot. You will see that these are two universes that never talk to each other and that came to completely opposite conclusions. To the point that I would say, uh, it led me to the conclusion that there are some aspects of uh, wing dynamics that flight physics, even today, does not understand about these aircraft. What is going on is that uh, to flight physics, uh, a jet which, uh, which is pushed from a narrow cone at the rear and a propeller aircraft which is pulled with a broad 20 foot wide disc at the front. To flight physics today, these two things are basically exactly the same thing. They all boil down to a single arrow vector, the vector of trust. And that's it. 20 foot hard disc and a one foot diameter cone pushing at the rear, those two things to flight physics are exactly the same. It's a bit like saying, you know, front wheel drive cars are exactly the same as rear wheel drive cars in handling. Well, we know that's not true, but uh, when it comes to aircraft, all of a sudden that doesn't apply. Oh, it's just a single vector and that's it, no difference. Uh, in fact, what is interesting is that uh, I have found that the loading on the prop discs uh, vary when the aircraft is turning. It varies from the inside portion of the turn to the outside portion of the turn. And this is my theory that this actually changes the nature of how the wing works in a horizontal turn. Now, the reason why they w did not detect this is because they checked those wing loading figures when doing dive pullouts. And the difference between doing a horizontal turn and a dive pullout is that when you're diving and pulling out, the prop disc is unloaded. It's unloaded by the fact that you're diving. And when you're turning, the prop disc is fully loaded all the time. Not only is it fully loaded, but the inside turn half is slower than the outside turn half. And this has major implication on how the aircraft behaves horizontally versus when you do a dive and a pullout. When the Society of Experimental Test Pilot. And 
these are 1989 test pilots, not 1940s test pilots. So you can take them more seriously than the 1940 guys. Uh, they actually tested these old airframes in 1989. And what they said was that uh, the minimum speed to reach 6 Gs in a horizontal turn was around 320 miles per hour indicated. Uh, and of course, no explanation for that. The explanation is that horizontally the prop disc is loaded and when you're doing a dive pullout, the prop disc is unloaded and this completely changes the behavior of the wing. And this is actually terra incognita. <laughs> This is actually, they don't, uh, they don't really, to them, if you ask an aerodynamic engineer today, if you ask them, is the behavior the same horizontally or vertically in a propeller, nose-driven, single-seat, low-wing monoplane, they will tell you, well, of course it's the same thing. Well, in one case, obviously the prop disc is unloaded from diving, and in the other case, the prop disc is loaded constantly and asymmetrically. So there, it is really quite surprising how crude is the knowledge of uh, flight physics, of the, the true behavior of these old aircraft. And what happened, I think, was that there was a rapid transition to jets at the time, uh, flight testing became more so sophisticated. And so propeller-driven aircraft remained uh, mired in the inaccurate previous knowledge. And this is the tricky part. It, the tricky part is that the, the wrong theory that that uh, that was um, prevalent in the 1940s matched later jet aircrafts. So the later jet aircrafts seemed to confirm that the wrong theory for propeller aircraft was correct and nobody ever came back to revisit these old planes to see if uh, just because jet aircraft, well, they do follow uh, wing loading rules. They do follow uh, uh, the, the, they are not affected by a propeller being loaded or unloaded. Uh, they behave completely differently and they behave closer to mathematical calculations of previous theories. But the problem is that nobody really revisited except for that one item that happened in 1989 when the Society of Experimental Test Pilot flew a few of old warbirds and what they found was quite different from the theory. Uh, they found for instance that the P-47 turns better than the P-51 which is of course obvious when you look at the combat reports but if you look at what the test pilots of the time said they said that the, the P-51 turned better than the P-47. This is nonsense. This is absolute nonsense. Uh, the P-47, the and I will go on a limb here because it depends on circumstances and all that, but the P-47, I think, generally would sustain slow speed turn at a faster rate than any mark of Spitfire. I mean, this is how pronounced the difference is. Uh, so the, the reality is that the character of these aircrafts is completely different if you read an account from a combat pilot. But if you read an account from a test pilot, then it becomes more in line with theories. And sadly, and this is the sad part, test pilots left more voluminous and quotable paperwork than did frontline combat pilots. That is the big problem here, is that I have numerous frontline combat pilot quotes that contradict completely 
and even general opinions uh, that contradict completely what test pilots say. But test pilot, by their nature, they left more records. And so the picture we have of these aircrafts is completely skewed uh, to an extent that is almost hard to believe. 